Hello my friends, this is Jimmy. Welcome back. If you are a first time visitor, welcome and thank you. Today's video is a little bit different than the typical videos that I post. First, there is no tripod or any other type of stabilizing device, so you will see some shaking in the video. And that is because I am holding my camera in my hand and I have shaky hands, so it's unavoidable. But this is the only way I can get this video done. This is actually a VR for Decorate Your Life. Sandy is having a flash giveaway. And she asks that you address or answer one of three, at least one of three, you can do all three or you can do two, uh, questions that she posted in her video. One was, how do you store your 12 by 12 papers? The second was, how do you store your larger cutting dies? And then the third was, how do you store your larger sticker packs? So I'm going to do all three. Um, and I am going to film all three by holding camera in hand. So again, it's going to be a shaky video, but um, it's the only way I can get this done. So let me start with my 12 by 12 paper pads. Uh, as you can see, uh, <laughs> this is, I would say, probably 98% of my 12 by 12 um, paper I do have some loose sheets that I store um, elsewhere, but my pads, this is how I actually store my pads. I use these milk-like crates, and I believe I got these at Michael's. Um, they are these collapsible crates, and they're really long. I don't know the dimensions, but I did get them at Michael's when I moved my craft room from upstairs into my finished basement because I wanted something uniform in size and these were really really cheap at the time they were on sale I got each one for less than three dollars so that's a pretty great deal and what I do is I organize my paper pads by brand name in alphabetical order so right now they all have temporary tabs because I still haven't decided what I want to do in terms of temp, uh, more permanent dividers, but right now they are all temporarily tabbed um, with a little sticky posted. So like American Crafts, Anna Griffin, Authentique, uh, Basil, Bow Bunny, and so forth and so on. So this way, um, when I do get a new paper pad, I know exactly where to put it right away. Also, I do have a general sense of what the aesthetic of each of these brands is so I know if I'm doing a certain project I already in my mind know what brand I want to work with and if I don't have an idea in my mind of what brand I want to work with it's super easy for me to just flip through these look and get some inspiration so this system is awesome for me it works for me because it keeps everything in one place and it keeps everything organized and that's just the way my mind works. So that is how I store my paper pads. And these crates are on top of an Ikea bookcase. One of those eight square height bookcases or two high depending on how you lay it. I have mine laying on the long side. So it definitely holds a lot. So that is how. I store my 12 by 12 paper. Next, I will show you how I store my larger die cuts. Okay, my larger die cuts. And I am so sorry, you guys. This is going to be super shaky because I have to kind of pick my arms up a little higher so I can get the top shelf in frame. And that's making my hands super shaky. So let me apologize again for that. But my larger die cuts I essentially store on another uh, Ikea bookshelf and this one is a white bookshelf that gosh I purchased a long long time ago it actually used to be a bookshelf in my daughter's room but since we redid her room it was an extra shelf that I brought down here with me and 
what I do is just stack them so that, um, as you can see, if I can get my shadow out of the way, all of the labels are facing outward so I can see the names of them. So, um, and again, I have a general sense of what dyes I have. Essentially, it's, you know, Sizzix and <laughs> um, they're all Sizzix, but it's mostly Tim Holtz on this shelf right here. These are all of my Tim Holtz dyes here, the bigger ones. And then up here are everything else from Christmas to Halloween to cards to you name it. It's all in there. Um, hey, there's my little vintage <laughs> spot. <laughs> so um, anytime I need something, I just move um, the decorative items out of the way and I'm able to see everything pretty, pretty clearly um, in terms of what I have. So it's convenient, it works, it looks, you know, nice and tidy. Uh, I don't like things looking too messy. Sometimes it can't be helped in a craft room. You can't always have everything 100% like everything in its place. But I try and this system works for me for my die cuts. So that is how I store my larger die cuts. So next I will show you how I store my larger sticker sheets. Alrighty, so here we are in another section of my craft room, another bookshelf. Ha, surprise. <laughs> so here is another bookshelf and um, also an Ikea bookshelf. Can you tell I shop a lot at Ikea? I like their stuff, what can I say? But the bottom shelf, the bottom, very bottom of my shelf has these bins, these storage bins. And again, the majority of these bins are from Michael's and um, I purchased them either online or in store in the past when they've been on sale. So I got these all relatively cheap. Now the lighting here is not too great because it's off, to a, you know, it's a little corner next to my desk. So, um, but I think you can still see what's going on here. Um, on the right side, those bins hold like my paper scraps, my felt and whatnot. But on the left side, all of those bins right there, the kind of teal color ones, are my larger stickers or stickers, period. So this works for me because, again, everything is centralized. The bins are big enough to definitely hold um, the larger uh, paper uh, sticker sets so it's it's awesome so if I pull one out like I'll pull the top one out here and I'll put it just ride with me <laughs> I'll put it on my desk and excuse my desk I have quite a few projects going on here right now so you open this up and you will see my larger sticker sheets so a lot of these are the chipboard pieces the Dollar Tree pieces, anything um, really um, that I can't put in the smaller container, I put in this larger one. And I even have some of these same containers dedicated to my smaller sticker um, sets. So the goal for me is when storing to kind of keep like items together in one area of my craft room stored in like storage containers so that I know every time I see one of these bins it's going to be stickers every time I see um, another color bin it's going to be something else that's just how my mind works so <laughs> that's what I do so it works for me and even within the bins what I do is I try to keep like stickers together like I know I have one of these bins it's all um, seasonal like Halloween, um, Valentine's Day, Christmas. I'll have another one that's all a doodle bug, um, the larger sticker sheets that they have, the icon sticker sheets. I'll have another one that's all birthdays, and I'll have one that's just all um, dimensional. So I, I try to do that. It doesn't always work. I do sometimes get some mixes, and that's okay. Um, as long as they are in a sticker bin, all is good. So that is how I store my large sticker sheets. 
So I think I answered all three of the questions now. So it is a flash giveaway and I believe it's open. Oh my gosh, guys, look at the mess on my desk. I'm working on a project <laughs> for my Girl Scouts. And um, anytime you work on a project, the desk always looks like, <sighs> but um, yeah. Not the, top, not the topic of this video, but in any way, um, Sandy's giveaway is a flash giveaway. It's open until Monday, um, so definitely get on it. I would be interested in seeing how other people store their items because, um, you know, maybe your method is better than mine, and I'm always open to, to new ways of storing. So there you have it. I will link the challenge video down below. Definitely go check her out. And I will catch you all in the next video. Until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.